So you join me at Bridge Motorcycles in Exeter and I'll come down to try out the Tenere 700. So climbing on board, it is a fairly tall bike. Um, I'm about five foot seven, so and uh, 32 inch inseam. But once on board, it feels very good actually, very comfortable. It's a nice thing about these bigger bikes, so plenty of leg room. So this is the CP2 engine from Yamaha. It is only a 700cc, about 70 odd brake horsepower, something like that. It should be enough for the road. Plenty of low down torque. But the real question is, the Yamaha Tenere, you watch all the videos online and you'll see guys flying up mountains and over sand dunes and you know going across Morocco and all kinds of things but um, I'm based here in the UK and so the reality is do you need this is this ideal for everyday riding commuting and uh, you know touring when you're going away or are you better off getting a, a more road biased bike so I'm going to take this first of all down some twisties a nice little A road, see how it behaves there, and then I'm going to try it on some faster roads. I want to see what the wind protection is like and the comfort over a bit of time. Like I say, I do do a lot of touring, so it's important to me that the bike's comfortable and, and handles well at speed. The Tenere 700 has been um, a staple in Yamaha's uh, fleet for a few years now. I believe there's quite a few variants now with the um, with the World Raid and everything just coming out. There's the Rally Edition and the, just slightly different spec bikes really. I think the newer ones have better suspension fitted. You can fit things like quick shifters and you can fit um, heated grips and you know heated seat and all the other farkles that you might get with say something like a Tiger 900 who have all the extras and the gadgets. But this bike isn't about that. This bike is known and loved for being no nonsense and no rider aids or anything I believe this one has ABS that you can turn on and off and that is your lot got the old Casio style dial here big clear easy to read nothing exciting going on there really rev speed time mileage gear indicator nothing exciting on the switch gear so uh, no thrills with this bike nothing exciting at all but the idea with this bike is that you should be able to tour with it and go a long way with it in relative comfort and that's what I'm here to find out So the Tenere is obviously quite a, a big tall bike, um, it has the, the big wheels up front, so it is mainly aimed at off-roading really, that's, that's what it's set up for. But there are a lot of people that swear by it, and I can't say that it feels like it handles particularly badly, I mean I've only been on the bike five minutes. So. Uh, simple cable clutch here no slipper clutch and nothing exciting I have to admit I've noticed that the the throttle does feel very snatchy when moving away actually it's smooth riding along at a low speed low revs not much in the way of vibrations which is nice I can already feel that the seat is quite firm though. The seat position and everything feels very comfortable and nice, sat bolt upright. Arms a nice way apart, that's how I like it. But the seat is very firm. I'm sure there are multiple options for replacing that. So power wise, as you can see, 
no problem at overtaking traffic and using this bike at real world speeds. I'm, it's only the uh, 700 CP2 engine from Yamaha. But as reliability goes, that is what you want. These are a very well tested, proven engine. Yeah, that throttle feels just at the, the beginning applying throttle where it feels very snatchy. I believe that there's so many mods now for this bike. People have been doing, I've seen online, obviously I've been doing a bit of research into this bike. There's a lot of mods available for it and I know you can flash the ECU and do bits and pieces so I'm sure that can be improved. So the Tenere 700, like I say, is predominantly designed for being able to do everything, including a bit of off-roading. Um, reality is in the UK, or certainly where I am down in Devon, there's not much off-roading to be done. There's a few green lanes here and there you could find to do. So I would be using this bike, like I would guess most people in the UK, on a daily basis. Um, you know, Sunday toy and all the rest of it. Just, oh, hello. Wing mirror's on the, on the move here. That's not very good, is it? This one's tightening up. So it's not a fault on the bike. So as I was saying, you're realistically going to use this bike in the UK for going to work, commuting and, you know, your Sunday rides and stuff. I don't know how many green lanes you find. They're great if you live in Wales or something like that. I know there's a lot more up around there. But the big question is, do you really need the adventure bike set up for 20% of riding? I mean, we all love to look at the adventure bike, oh, I certainly do anyway. I'm guessing if you're watching this, you also like the looks and the features of the adventure bike. I'd be interested to know how many of you guys are going to use this bike specifically for off-road. Do you trailer it to where you're going, or do you ride to where you're going to actually use it? Maybe you know of more green lanes and places off-roading where you can use this than I did. I know that there can be an issue with the Tenere 700 with the way that the exhaust is set up. I believe it's attached to the main frame of the bike. And so there have been instances of people dropping the bike when using it off-road and um, bending the frame which is obviously a, a huge problem I know there are again solutions for that I think there's a whole new exhaust system you can get and um, that then comes up under inside where the frame is or under the seat so that avoids that problem hopefully if you've got lots of um, bags or panniers or something on the bike then you'll protect it from that issue I'm not sure how much of a problem that is in reality and I know it has happened. Enough for somebody to design an exhaust system where uh, it avoids that problem. So let's see how this bike picks up. Vibrations in my hands are becoming very noticeable now. This is definitely a, a bit of a vibey bike actually. Maybe a character of this um, CP2, but having said that, I've ridden the Tracer 700. I didn't notice that to be a problem there. I'd be interested to know if anybody knows if they've done anything about the um, vibrations, perhaps on the newer models of the bike. And this one's a couple years old now. I know they've um, been making a lot of adjustments, especially for this year's 2023 model TFT display, and you can get the quick shifter and a few nice new gadgets which is nice the display looks really nice actually I've seen a lot of reports of this uh, Casio style one vibrating a lot particularly above about 50 miles an hour that moves around but that's not a major issue brakes feel great really good a bit of nose dive, but you would expect that with uh, such long travel suspension on a bike like this. 
I see you uh, have an accessory bar fitted here to the screen, ideal, ready to put your sat nav straight onto. You would definitely want it up here, I think, not down on the, the bars. You'd be looking down a lot of that one. But up on that accessory bar, that's right at the height, high heights, that's perfect. It's big potholes there on the corner. No issues for the Tenere. When this bike came out, uh, the first year it came out, I believe it came out at about eight and a half grand and it sold like hotcakes and you can understand why. A fantastic machine for the money. But as time's gone on, the bike's creeping up. I believe the base model one now is something like 10 grand. And then as you start going up for uh, the better spec ones, obviously that price increases. And I believe you can spend close to around 13 grand now and you know, you're know you getting into Tiger money now, Tiger 900, that sort of thing. But you're getting a lot more gadgets and refinement. I haven't ridden the 2023 model. I know there's been lots of updates, but um, this one does feel like you pay eight grand for it. So, joining the dual tower as well. Wind isn't um, causing any big issues at all. Oh, you can see my glove here. It's catching the wind it's right here, which is just going over the top of my helmet actually, so that's no problem at all. Yeah, you, this windscreen's doing a great job. You can see here where my hand, my hand's just catching the winds now, out here. So for me at 70 miles an hour, the wind is fine. The vibrations are there, noticeable, but not a huge problem, but it's definitely there. Um, as soon as you bring the speed up, you can feel the vibrations considerably more. Unfortunately, I feel like I've become a bit fixated on the vibrations, but that is the problem. Once you have something like that and you notice it, and particularly if you're on a long ride, you can't switch off from it. It is there, it is constant, and you're taking it with you everywhere you go. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I am in the market for a new middleweight adventure style bike that I can go touring on. It has something about it, you know, something with a bit, little bit of excitement, but it needs to have the comfort levels and everything there as well for the long distance touring. There's so many options in that segment of the market now and there's some nice new ones coming out as well. I mean you've got the Honda Trans Alp 750 coming out. I'm not sure if that one's available yet. You've got the 890 Adventure from KTM, just come out. You've got the new versions of the Tenere's. Um, they look very promising, they've just come out. And I think there'll be a big following for them, but this one in particular, I don't think it's for me. We have the Tiger 900, obviously, to use, the Tiger 900 Rally. So there is a lot to choose from and all very similarly priced. So I think when you're choosing from this, I, I mean, always say this, you can only get to know about, you can look at it at the magazines and online and watch as many reviews as you like. You'll never know if you like the bike or if it's the bike for you until you ride it. And I really like the look of the Tenere 700 and, and how it is, and the following it has, and the, the Yamaha reliability is a big appeal for me. Uh, I can't get past those vibrations, unfortunately. This isn't a bike that I would want to ride for a, a long period of time. That's my opinion. I'm not saying that's right for you. And clearly, you know, there's a lot of people that have bought this bike. A lot of people really love this bike. So that is just something for me. That's just my opinion. So I'm just going to pull over and uh, find somewhere quiet to show you this bike. So a quick look around the Tenere. This one in the black and blue finish. I think it's a fantastic looking machine. It definitely looks the part. I won't go on about all the fancy gadgets, um, you know, like the anti-squat, that sort of thing. There's plenty of more technical spe you know, specs and stuff online. People that do those videos far better than me. 
I can see that we got the Brembo brakes on here, so that explains the, the fantastic braking. That was definitely something to be noted on this bike. It's a little bit dirty now. Not keen on those um, Yamaha indicators. They've been around a while, haven't they? So I'll start it up for you. It's only got the standard exhaust, but I'll let you have a little listen to it. I know that these make a fantastic noise. You can um, decat them and put aftermarket exhaust pipes on and stuff. They sound fantastic. That CP2 engine is well known across uh, a few bikes in the Yamaha range. Okay, great. Time to get this one back to Bridge Motorcycles. So I meant to look over the tyres on this bike when I stopped just now. The bike's done over 9,000 miles. It's from the used range in Bridge. And uh, I just wondered whether the tyres have been replaced and that's contributing to the vibrations. So a quick note here. This bike is fitted with Bridgestone Battle Axe tyres. Are the recommended tyres to be fitted for this bike for road use? What are people using? Let me know again in the comments below. So I'd like just to take a moment and thank Bridge Motorcycles in Exeter. They've let me take out this bike and uh, try it out, see if it's the one for me. No problems at all, they're always very helpful at Bridge Motorcycles, highly recommend them. They're very popular in the area in Devon. Unfortunately for me, this one isn't for me, but they have a very large selection of bikes here. So back into the warehouse, me and have a look around. Old Honda Trans out there, packed up, 2007, still going strong. Which brings up a fair point really. If you want a no-nonsense adventure bike without any electronic gadgets and aids and all the rest of the stuff that comes now on the modern bikes, why not spend three grand on a nice older Trans out? It's about the same technology as this um, Tenere, I would say. I'm sure the Tenere's got a better suspension and uh, you know, a few things and the, the fancy anti-squat and stuff fought into it. But for somebody like me, who's going to do most of their riding on the road, but want something capable on the dirt and you know gravel tracks and stuff when you get to somewhere on your adventures, maybe a cheaper used option might be a, a good one for you. I know Trans out, definitely very popular in the day. Like I say, Honda are now bringing out the new Trans Alp as well, aren't they? That's the Trans Alp 750. I think that's about 90 horsepower. That should be more than enough, a little bit more than this Tenere. Not that the Tenere is lacking in power at all. So arriving back now at Bridge Motorcycles. We've got a Honda over on one side. A huge warehouse out the back down there, full of used bikes. And they have the Yamaha and Triumph and all the, the big brands here, all the new bikes inside. Right, go back in and speak to the guys, let them know my thoughts. Hope I've um, given you some useful insights on the Tenere 700, whether you're looking into it or just uh, watching a video to compare to your own thoughts, let me know. Click the subscribe button if you like motorcycle travel, motorcycle content and reviews, and I'll see you on the road again.